Let's begin. Right. Hello. Hi. We we I talked with Tara about doing um, the practice of Tara for people. Well, uh, she knows somebody who is like in the hospital, but we can use this practice for uh, anybody that is uh, facing a problem, an obstacle for our own. Um, removal of obstacles, illnesses, and problems. So it's, it is says that it's very effective practice. So let's try to do this practice in a very simple way, like with the main steps, so that we don't get too complicated. And in this practice, you can do it. You don't need empowerment. We're going to visualize Green Tara in front of us, but we can also um, do this practice and visualize ourselves as green tarot if we have the empowerment, as you know. So let's begin by doing a little bit of um, shamatha practice, and then we can do refuge and the four measurables and bodhicitta motivation, and then continue with the recitation of the mantra and holding the visualization. But I will guide you in each step and explain the process. As you know, Tara is. Um, the aspect of active compassion of our Buddha nature, of our Buddha mind, and that is the um, thing we need to to remember, right? That we are uh, not separated from this aspect. It's, a, it's an aspect of our primordial mind. Okay, so let's begin by taking a comfortable posture, taking three deep breaths. and uh, releasing all tension in our body, in our mind. Allowing our mind to settle in its natural state without distraction, without grasping, slowly coming to the present. And let's begin by doing a scanning from top to bottom, from our head to our toes, releasing all points of tension that we find in our body. With each out breath we release and we rest. Allowing our body to find that posture of stillness, relaxation, stability. If you find any pain, any discomfort in your body, release it with the out breath. Imagine that you take it with the in breath and release it with the out breath. And you relax that area of your body. Remember to relax the muscles of your face. Leave the eyelids relaxed, your jaw, shoulders, and all the areas where you normally find that your body tends to get tight due to stress, bad posture, worries that manifest in our body. So let your breath also take its natural rhythm without controlling, without trying to modify it. And let your breath settle in its natural state, adopting its own natural rhythm without concerning about modifying it in any way. Let your body naturally regulate your breath.
Now also release any emotional tension and mental tension that you perceive you had today or in the last days or week. Allow yourself to be present, releasing any worries about the past, about the future. Relaxing the mind as well as the body. Finding that balance of relaxation, stability and clarity. If there are too much thoughts, distractions, agitation in your mind, just allow it to be there but without getting lost in thoughts, bring your attention back to the present. If you feel your mind is dull, sleepy, bored, experiencing any kind of laxity, then take a deep in-breath, straighten your back, Open your eyes a little bit more and focus more clearly with vividness. You can choose for this practice to focus on your breath or sounds, anything that is happening in the present moment, or you can also just rest in the space of the mind, becoming aware of any mental event and make that your meditation object. You can also just choose to be without object. Just be aware of being aware. Whichever some of the practice you want to do right now, you can choose it and remain there, cultivating that balance, applying antidotes. If you feel drowsy, refocus your attention if you feel distracted, you feel agitation in your mind, just relax more deeply. Let's do this for a few more minutes in silence.
Now that our body and mind are in a state of more relaxation and presence, let's move to the practice of Tara. Let's begin by uh, doing a short motivation for this practice. Uh, bring in your imagination, your loved ones, and all beings around you, imagine um, that they are experiencing different kinds of situations right now. And let's generate this motivation of doing this practice, not only to dispel our problems, our obstacles, but also the obstacles and problems, illnesses, difficulties that our family, our relatives, our friends, but also all beings in the planet are experiencing right now, uh, victims of the pandemic and different diseases and uh, violence and different situations. Generate deeply in your heart motivation to do is practice for all those things that are right now experiencing some kind of pain or suffering and that uh, through the merit that we cultivate by doing this practice we can also dispel the ignorance attachment and aversion in our minds so we can develop uh, the altruistic motivation of bodhicitta to achieve enlightenment and liberation from suffering not only for our benefit but for the benefit of all sentient beings with this motivation the highest motivation you can generate in your heart the most compassionate and selfless let's begin this practice by uh, remembering that tara is not an external goddess is more like a representation a symbolic figure of the aspect of our enlightened nature our own buddha mind so here's an image of green tara there's different colors representing different aspects of the wisdom of tara and uh, we remember that the green has that aspect of um, being representing active compassion and that's why she's sitting in in the posture the left leg is in the posture of concentration meditative absorption but the right leg is extended in that position of ready to stand up and help extending a hand to sentient beings who are suffering so this is the representation of the feminine aspect of compassion and ultimately an aspect of our own wisdom mind so everything is a symbol here the lotus flower the ornaments the tala blue flower in her hand everything 
So just remember that and try to generate the visualization of Tara to the best of your capability in front of you. Um, visualize this aspect of your mind of great compassion and wish to serve and help all sentient beings manifesting as a body of light uh, you can also visualize all your teachers or female and male teachers who have been in your path who have you have encountered and even if they are not living in this world right now through their books their teachings you have received some kind of knowledge so imagine all these teachers dissolving into this figure of tara in front of you and uh, visualize this tara as a form of light representing uh, also like uh, the mother earth and all the feminine aspect of the divinity of enlightenment so let all of this merge into this central figure in front of you in a distance of about a meter or so at the level of your forehead small it doesn't have to be very big made of green light green emerald light and imagine next to your right is your father and to your left is your mother it doesn't matter if they have passed away or you never met them imagine uh, around and behind them all your family relatives friends behind them you can also visualize all the strangers and people you don't know and uh, around also you can visualize uh, people that you consider enemies or that they are hostile they treat you bad or you don't like them and also you can visualize animals insects you can include all sentient beings including if you think there are beings in other realms you can imagine they are there too so as wide as you can be and inclusive you can be just generate that feeling that visualization to to the best of your abilities so now with this holding this visualization um, let's do the uh, refuge in our mind orienting our mind in that direction of refuge and think that we are all sentient beings um, as extensive as space that may we all be free from suffering and that we achieve the essence of enlightenment and that we all together go for refuge in uh, we take refuge in something that is beyond our dualistic mind our self selfish uh, attitudes so we take refuge in that Buddha nature or perfect pure mind uh, whatever you want to call it we go for refuge uh, to the Buddhas and all the teachers who teach us the, the path to enlightenment we also take refuge in well the Buddha we take refuge in our own uh, Buddha mind, our own primordial wisdom and the potential we have to achieve it. We did also take refuge in the Dharma, the collection of teachings that can lead us in the direction of uh, liberation from mental afflictions. And we uh, go for refuge in the Sangha, the community, the friends that share with us that wish to be free to find genuine happiness and uh, following a spiritual path and um, take it in your, in your heart and imagine that you are taking refuge in these things and not in the eight worldly concerns 
in the search for praise, fame, money, pleasures, and all other things that cannot give us lasting happiness. And now, let's take a few minutes just to do a short version of the four immeasurables. So first, uh, the loving kindness. And imagine all sentient beings, the same around you, and make this little aspiration. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. And sit for a moment with that aspiration. Just, it's like a little prayer, a wish that all sentient beings can find true genuine happiness and cultivate its true causes. May we all find happiness and cultivate the causes that lead to genuine happiness. Now the compassion. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and its causes. And include yourself there. May we all be free from all suffering and we cultivate the causes to happiness and stop creating the causes of suffering. You know these causes of suffering are mental afflictions with its roots, ignorance, attachment and aversion. So may we all be free of these poisons of ignorance, attachment and aversion that cause all our suffering and suffering of others. Next, we say, may all sentient beings not be separated from sorrow, less please. So this corresponds to the third of the four immeasurables, empathetic joy. And it's just feeling happy for those who are right now experiencing health, happiness, some kind of uh, well-being and wishing they may not be separated from that well-being they continue to experience happiness as you know this counteracts envy and jealousy so it's a way to be happy for for others rejoicing in their happiness so take a moment to just generate that in your heart And may all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from bias, attachment, and anger. So take a moment to generate that equanimity and remember equanimity dissolves attachment and anger by removing the labels of enemies, friends, and strangers and seeing all sentient beings as worth of love and compassion, equalizing our feelings without making divisions towards all sentient beings. So take a moment to rest in that equanimity. Remember each one of these, we do a separate meditations, but right now they're integrated in this practice as a way to give direction and motivation, a right meaning to this practice. So now visualizing Tara in front of us, doesn't matter if the visualization is not very clear, it can be a bit blurry or you can focus just on one aspect. And you can also visualize in front of you, between Tara and you, you can visualize yeah, a person or an animal or someone who you want to do the practice for, someone who is uh, maybe suffering or experiencing uh, an obstacle, uh, an illness, a difficulty. Uh, we're particularly doing this practice for Clara's friend today, but you can do it for anybody you choose to 
to do it and uh, I just feel that we are directing our mind asking uh, aspiring doing this practice for the benefit of this person but includes or include all sentient beings in your practice as well including yourself so now we are going to do a short version of the seven limb prayer so first um, we we visualize tara and we feel some kind of reverence um, not as something external but to what she represents and we visualize in front of us that we generate all kinds of offerings especially those things we are attached to we we have difficulty to give away because we feel strong attachment and also all the offerings um, made related with the senses which are the main things we get attached to such as uh, smells that are nice so we can visualize incense if uh, we are also attached for example to nice sounds we don't like bad sounds so we can visualize nice music as a form of uh, we can visualize a musical instrument for example or uh, anything that reminds us of nice sounds the same with um, we can visualize water flowers candles all kinds of uh, food and uh, also for example if we are attached to money we can visualize money there or uh, if we are attached to our car we can visualize our car there anything that you can imagine imagine that these are clouds of offerings that you're giving away it's a way to practice uh, liberating from attachment cultivating generosity letting go and so we can even visualize our body there or anything you want to visualize basically to which you're experiencing a strong attachment imagine you offer all this to tara to your own primordial wisdom and uh, in that way you are cultivating the causes to transform all the things that surround you and there are basically appearances that are constantly change you want to transform them into things that are helping you in your spiritual practice and not as things that create more attachment to you so it doesn't matter if you can't visualize this very clearly just imagine you're giving away all these things And with that sense, may I use, may I, may Tara help me use it for the benefit of others. Now, take a moment to uh, generate this uh, regret, not uh, as remorse or guilt, but just uh, acknowledgement of our negative actions that we have accumulated through our life um, when we have acted moved by mental afflictions like ignorance and anger and other emotions and afflictions that that has produce actions that harm others. So let's just regret of the things we said and did for a moment. Acknowledge that we don't want to continue doing those actions and rejoice in all the virtues that you have done, that you have um, practiced all the acts of compassion and generosity and patience you have had in that way by remembering this we are directing our minds and training our minds to focus on on the virtues and not on the negative 
aspects and afflictions that we do due to habituation. Forgive yourself too, like uh, don't feel too bad that you have been um, acting due to ignorance and these mental afflictions because we all experience this. It's very difficult to eradicate completely where we are on the path working on this. So rejoice for that, for doing this work, for continuing your practice and meditation. And, um, and wish that all suffering for all beings ends and that the Dharma continue helping sentient beings to be free from suffering. And um, dedicate any virtues you have done, um, not only to have pleasure in this life and benefits, but dedicate it for something meaningful, for the healing of, of the people you want to heal, for the pandemic to go away, for everything you can imagine, but also for uh, achieving enlightenment. So don't feel it's a, a big aspiration you can't have. Imagine that you can aspire to this and by doing it and dedicating your virtue towards that goal, you are cultivating already the causes to go in that direction. So take a moment to, to just feel this in your heart, sit with it for a moment. Now, focus on the visualization of Tara. Um, imagine this lotus flower made of beautiful petals, everything made of light. On top of the lotus flower, there's a moon disk. And on top of this is Tara sitting. Her body is transparent. Her left leg is in the posture of concentration, meditative absorption. Right leg is in the compassionate action, uh, posture extended, left, right leg extended. And left hand is at the level of the heart, sustaining a blue optala flower. The right hand is on her right knee in the mudra of generosity and sometimes is represented with a flower on that hand too sometimes without the flower doesn't matter imagine she's wearing uh, different ornaments and silk scarves and This uh, represent like the royalty of the awakened state of mind. On the top of her head, she's wearing um, like um, it's not a crown. I'm not sure the the word in English, but it's it's this thing holding her hair can see the image and it has five stones of five different colors white blue green red and yellow these represent the five families the Buddha families that represent the five wisdoms and so these five wisdoms are aspects of our primordial mind different ways in which the wisdom manifests, such as pacifying, magnetizing, enriching, um, and so on. And the two knots on the top of her head also represent 
uh, the whole thing represents uh, the Sambhuakaya body, a, bo uh, a body of made of light. In the center of her heart, at the level of the heart, in the center of the chest, visualize the syllable Tam. You can visualize it with the letters in Tibetan, in Sanskrit, or in your normal script. Doesn't matter, just T A M, Tam. That's the syllable associated with Tara. So imagine a green syllable Tam. And around the syllable is the mantra of Tara, Om Tare to Tare Ture Soha. So imagine this uh, mantra spelling uh, clockwise around the syllable Tam and green rays of light emanating in all directions, reaching all sentient beings and healing them with this green light. As you uh, hold this visualization, let's recite the mantra of Tara um, for some minutes. So we're going to I'm going to start saying it and you can repeat it with me and then eventually I will say it in a lower voice once you get the rhythm. Remember, you have to say that out loud, not too loud, that people around you would listen to it, uh, not too low, that you cannot listen to yourself, and not too fast, not too slow. You have to pronounce each syllable, and by doing this and focusing on the mantra and the visualization, we are developing the ability of the mind to focus on a virtual subject that represents our nature and our aspirations of uh, removing obstacles of all beings. All this is focusing our mind as a laser in that aspiration. So let's begin now. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha Om tare tu tare tu re soha. 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 Om tare tu tare tu Tare to tare to the soha. 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 Tare to tare to the soha.
Now, rest for a moment your mind, visualizing this green light of Tara, feeling your body, the person you put in front of you, and the bodies of your parents, your relatives, or the stranger people, beings, animals, and also the enemies, the hostile, difficult people. Visualize all of them filled with green light without exception. A green light of healing, of compassion, wisdom, Imagine their illnesses are dissipated, the obstacles, the problems are dissipated by the power of this green light. Imagine all beings on the planet filled with green light, expanding this green light to all the universe, filling with green light every star, every planet in the universe, expanding infinitely, dissolve everything in green light. Feel the green light comes back dissolving into your heart, dissolving all the visualization into this green light that comes back to your heart. Now visualize green Tara, this aspect of your primordial wisdom dissolving, coming to the top of the crown of your head dissolving completely in green light and merging, entering your body through your head, through the central channel, feel your whole body integrated with this aspect of primordial wisdom that is Tara, feel the green light inside you, visualize your body becoming translucent green light. Now dissolve it from the top of your head towards your heart and your feet towards your heart into a green little sphere in the center of your chest. This little green sphere dissolves into a dot of green light that dissolves into space and rests there without concepts, without distraction, in the present awareness that is always present, in the clarity of knowing, of being empty awareness, just rest. Thank you. 
And let's finish this practice by dedicating let's dedicate this practice for the benefit of all beings, for all illnesses to be removed for the pandemic to finish, for all beings to heal, for all obstacles to remove for the planet and to be healed for the environment, the climate, for the animals, for all those who are in hospitals, for all those who are experiencing their transition of death and dying right now, for all those who are victims of violence and racism and all other problems. And particularly dedicated for your loved ones, for anybody in your life who is suffering. Because you have this karmic connection with them, you can direct this energy towards them. And finally, dedicate it for yourself so that you can continue practicing without obstacles, that you can continue finding great teachers, great teachings, uh, opportunities to practice, that you uh, have health and long life to continue developing, transforming into your spiritual path. And that this leads you to great happiness but also uh, ultimately to the achievement of enlightenment, liberation, and that you can do this not only for your benefit, but for the benefit of all beings. And slowly come back to this virtual room, stretch your body, relax for a moment, Well, thank you for doing this meditation with me. I know it went a little bit longer than usual, but um, that is how tantric practices normally are. They require us to kind of um, reflect first on giving the right direction and then generating the visualization, and taking some time to recite the mantra. And then it's very important the dissolution aspect of dissolving everything back into emptiness, right? Not reifying Tara, not reifying ourselves, not re reifying the suffering of sentient beings, and resting those final moments in that empty clarity. It's very important to do that. And remember at the beginning, doing the refuge and the motivation, and at the end, the dedication is also very important so that this practice can have that power of healing, removing obstacles. And so sometimes we wonder how is that this practice works and how is that people are going to receive the benefit or heal, right? So here it's important that we remember uh, all other practices where we reflect on the interdependence on, on beings, of beings. We are interdependent with everybody. Even though it doesn't seem like that, it seems like we are separated, like we are like these uh, separated individuals, separated from everything else and from the universe. But it's not like that. And we want to go deeper into that non-dual mind, which is the Buddha mind, uh, that we all have and share. And it's not one, it's not many. So we also have to remember those are concepts. And so these practices are helping us come back to that state. So we can visualize Tara as an enlightened being, but also remember it's not separated from us. And this works at the different levels, right? It works at the subconscious level because of the symbolic image, the recitation of the mantra, the visualization, everything plays a role in the practice to really have effects. So ultimately, we're not so separated as we believe from all other sentient beings. And that's why this can be helpful. Of course, if we're very distracted during the practice, it's not going to be very effective, right? That's why we do some shamatha practice at the beginning and we continue practicing again and again. Uh, we focus on the mantra, kind of with single pointed attention if we can, because when our mind is distracted, we're not giving the, all that meaning. 
So it's, it's a little bit like learning to drive. You have to first uh, kind of hold the visualization and remember reciting the mantra with a certain speed and entering into that meditative state. But once you practice and practice, it becomes easier and more effective, right? But the fact that we do it as a group also has a powerful effect and meaning. So by doing it this way, we kind of generate more merit and we can direct it with more force into those um, wishes and aspirations we do. Remember the power of prayer and aspiration is because we're setting our intention, our mind in some direction. And that also is generating a cause. Everything is cause and consequence. And by taking an action of body, speech and mind, in which case we did, visualizing is an aspect of the mind, the reciting of the mantra is speech and our body is in a meditative uh, stillness, sitting with that intention. So by doing that, uh, Obviously, we are creating an effect, a consequence, right? And it's very beautiful if in our minds we're dedicating and doing this practice for others because uh, we're doing it self selflessly, right? Without uh, an intention to gain money or reputation or anything. We're doing it for really because we want to to do something for someone that is in the hospital or people that are suffering the pandemic, or we we really wish from our hearts that all this suffering ends. And that's the most meaningful motivation we can have. And dedicating some minutes to do this practice in that way really, really brings a lot of uh, blessings, or you can also call it um, kind of uh, it has a benefit in, in your mind and in others. You will feel that when you do this practice for others, it does have a strong effect. And um, as you uh, probably remember, I told you this story of um, Lama Soltrin when her grandson uh, took this, this liquid that was very toxic. And she was uh, kind of doing the tar practice and all her her students and friends were doing this practice and the boy healed completely. He didn't have any warnings and any, any problems. And it was like a situation of uh, death or, or life. And so really, really, there's a lot of examples of how this practice has been beneficial for a swift recovery and swift removal of obstacles. So the more you trust it and, and you have this faith, but not like blind faith, you're trusting your own Buddha nature, your own primordial wisdom. You can access it through this practice, right? So the mantra, the visualization is like a thread that is kind of bringing you back to that core, to that center of your Buddha nature. So practice this and dedicate it continuously for others. If you can do it as a daily practice, if you feel inspired, it's also very, very beneficial. If you have the opportunity to receive a green tar empowerment, also it activates those uh, seeds in your uh, mind to, uh, to, do, to have the realization of Tara. And that means uh, to become like Tara, to actualize that Tara state in yourself, to become yourself kind of a manifestation of Tara in this world. So this Tara, remember, represents the compassion in action. Each Buddha represents a different aspect of our primordial mind. And um, traditionally, uh, if you are doing a Tara, as, as your jidam or your personal uh, Buddha figure that you're working with, you would go into retreat and recite a lot of, like do this practice continuously for hours and days and days with a goal uh, of accumulating certain number of mantras and doing the practice for certain number of hours or in different uh, ways. But the idea is that uh, eventually, if you do this practice single pointedly for a long time, um, you have like this vision of Tara manifesting and talking to you, right? So for example, Atisha, this great master that brought Tibet, uh, 
uh, Buddhism to Tibet in the first wave. Uh, he 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 had Tara, Green Tara as his main uh, gentleman, and she appeared to him and said, "Well, if you go to Tibet, they were calling him to come to Tibet, and he said, if you go to Tibet, your life will be shortened, but you will be able to benefit countless sentient beings." And, and so he decides to go, and we know now that his teachings have spread to these days, to these times, to these all the countries in the world. So it's fantastic what um, he was able to accomplish by doing this practice. And there's a lot of examples of uh, great yogis who have uh, given this practice to heal a disease or an obstacle. So they take it, they go into retreat for certain days or weeks or months, depending on what the instruction of their teachers is. And by doing this practice, they heal from uh, difficult illnesses and things. So it's one of the practices that are more regarded as very effective in Tibet, in the Vajrayana tradition. So it's a beautiful, beautiful practice. And if you can, uh, have an empowerment. I recommend you. Uh, in the, there's this wonderful lama that is nowadays because normally empowerments they're giving in, in in person, right, with all the rituals and ceremony. But uh, due to his kindness, um, this this great lama Garchen Rinpoche is doing a lot of tarot retreats online and courses. And so he even has an empowerment that he gave uh, and is on his YouTube channel of uh, Garchen Institute uh, YouTube channel. So he has allowed people to, to listen to these teachings on Tara. I think even if you take it, by, I'm, I'm not sure you can go right to their center, but I think if you take it uh, after the empowerment has passed, it can also have some effect and blessings on, on you if you take it with it sincere wish practice and whenever you have the opportunity he's continuously teaching ta uh, green tara white tara different taras and so if you can attend a course or a teaching with him live um, i mean live but online that's also a good possibility to connect with this and receive an empowerment and whenever you have the chance to attend um there's many buddhist centers around the world that are offering this empowerment continuously because it's one of the uh, most practiced practice practices so you can go also to do this well i don't know if you have any questions or comments i'm going to to stop um streaming so we can have a little discussion here mm -hmm.